The Magic Show is brought to you by StarCityGames.com. And check this out. On August 20th and 21st, the StarCityGames.com Open Series comes to Boston. And this event is going to be huge. We're talking hundreds of players, over $14,000 in cash prizes, at least 18 players qualifying for the Charlotte Invitational at the end of the year. Live coverage all day courtesy of SCG Live and as much Magic the Gathering as we can pack into one weekend. So make plans to join Star City Games in Boston, and we'll see you there. All right, hello everybody. We are here with Brad Nelson. We're going to talk about the modern format. So tell me about your Friday night. Tell me about sort of like where you were when you saw uh, this uh, when you saw this announcement. I, I, I was hanging out at the Andersons. I was in Richmond, okay. obviously, and and I see a text message from Evan that says, you know, modern takes over the Pro Tour, and I instantly started dancing. <laughs> I did. Like I, I was on their patio just dancing up a storm because uh, like extended just seemed really boring. It didn't seem like it was going to be a fun Pro Tour, and now. Everything's up in the air. It's like the energy is just unreal with everyone I've been talking to. Oh my God. See, the people, like, you know, you, you've seen an episode already with me and Brad, and one of the things that we actually talked about for a while was the extended yeah. pro tour and so what you've done so far and how we were just like, ah, and, it, and it really years. went like, so what do you think about the pro tour? Uh, I hope I do good. <laughs> I'm going to play the lottery. I'll grab yeah. my Stoneforge my sticks. Stoneforge, Jace, whatever. Yeah. Like, let's do this one more time, right? Mm -hmm. So now. Everything's different. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Like the the band list is unreal, and like the amount of decks that are possible are still really big. But like, I'm just so impressed with the band list. It's just they have done things with this band list. All right, so what what, what I've done at this point is I broke it into like what I would call pillars of the format, and then just like good cards in the mm -hmm. format, and how they have banned both. Now, firstly, for those who aren't sure what Modern is, Modern is the eighth edition release, uh, the eighth edition core set and up, and mirrored in and forward. Mm -hmm. And so, from all of those cards, they have banned the uh, the following what I describe again as pillars, which are Hypergenesis, Glimpse of Nature, Dread Return slash Golgari Grave Troll, which means Dredge, yep. um, Valakut the Molten Tentacle, which basically kills off the uh, Prismatic Omen Valakut deck, uh, Bitter Blossom, so no fairies, uh, all of the artifact lands, so no affinity, uh, Dark Depths slash Sword of the Meek, so none of that Thips garbage that we have to deal with for a while, <laughs> uh, Jace the Mind Sculptor and Stoneforge Mystic. Just awesome. That's they're they're just incredible. Obviously, together, uh, two great tastes. that taste great together. Um, so, and those are like what I describe as the pillars. Those yep. are like the big ones where they just like socked it to the big decks. They make their own deck. Yeah, exactly. So now we have what I describe as good cards, which is uh, ancestral visions. I I don't understand how that got banned. <laughs> like, is it just the blood brain elf interaction? Like, I don't think so because that wasn't even good and extended, was it? Like. People tried doing it and it wasn't good. I, I think they're afraid of like control decks gaining an edge, but I, I don't feel like that's that bad of a card advantage spell. I, I really don't know why that was banned, but I think they were afraid of it, so it's gone. Visions is a, I mean, it's a very powerful spell, but yeah. regardless, I think it was the one spell I was just like, what, what, and then the other one's coming up. Uh, so I, I truly believe that they accidentally banned Ancestral Visions instead of Aether Vial. <laughs> they, really like, they, I, just, I, they just chose unwisely on the picker, and yeah. then they're just like, "Well, we got to run with it." So. Somebody just like just went A B, and, <laughs> and, and and that's what happened. Exactly. So uh, Crow Mox is next, I guess, to stop fast combo. Yeah, you, you, Crow Mox is a really powerful card, and like the combo decks are going to get an edge against uh, the aggro decks, mm. and you don't really want like turn one Bob in the format, like. Like, that's one of the scary cards that made, like, Theps, and it's made a lot of decks powerful. Yeah. And I think with the first chance of getting this modern format, mm -hmm. they really don't want the combo decks to be overpowered, because the right. answers aren't that big. Right. And I believe what they had said in the article, um, what Tom LaPelli had wrote, was that they were okay with turn three combo decks in Legacy, but they really want to turn four combo decks in modern. Mm -hmm. And so they take away things that uh, lets you skip that turn. Yeah. Like Chromox. Um, so Mental Misstep is the other... I really can't believe they banned that start with card. I, I like that one as well. I think if we can actually get a developed format, like with so many cards like playable, mm -hmm. like really aggressive decks are going to be really big. Mm -hmm. So you don't want the control decks to have such an edge with like, you know, when you're on the draw and you get to counter a wild in the cattle, right. Zoo's really like stuck, stuck. you know, like they're not going to be able to attack that much. Like a turn two Tarmogoyf is not that good without a 3-3 three, three attacking before it hit the board. Right. So I think 
keeping Mental Mist up on the format is going to stop combo and or control being able to beat all the combo and aggro decks. And so for me, that makes me question, you know, about Legacy and, you know, Mental Misstep is everywhere in Legacy, yeah. just like Force of Will is, but Mental Misstep is played in the Zoo decks, for mm -hmm. example, and that's, I'm guessing that's probably what would happen here if this weren't the case, if they hadn't banned it. Yeah, it, it could show up in other decks as well, um, mm -hmm. beating all the other one drops, and I think getting rid of Mental Misstep makes uh, Modern not look as much like Legacy. Obviously, they're two different different formats, but you don't really want to be super close. Like, you don't want the Zoo decks to be the exact same thing, except Shock Lands instead, instead of, of regular duels. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So moving on, Sensei's Age Divining Top is next, and I mean, that was banned. It has been for a while. Yeah, we, we don't want Counterbalance Top, nor do we want 50 to 60 minute, like, in your turn rounds. Top. Yeah, like, Up you don't want... That was the problem with it before, and people were scared of it. Yeah, I mean, counterbalance is one thing which is incredibly annoying for what it's worth. Yeah. But the constant check the top three cards in my library, yeah. fetch land, check the top I mean, three cards in my library. I was uh, the guy I was checking the top of my library, so it kind of sucks that it's gone. Like, two yeah. years ago I was mad that I lost my tops, but now I understand. They, they just make the game worse, and I don't like having to wait 40 minutes for a round anyway, so. Right, to push every turn at 20 minutes or whatever. Uh, so Skull Clamp is banned. I, I don't know why they banned that. Yeah, I mean, that yeah. card's just not busted at all. Um, oh, the Umazawa Jute is banned. Yeah, I, I think that's fine. Like, it's not that fun of a card. Yeah, it's just overpowered. It yeah. really is. And even if it's underpowered, it warps the format. Like, it's powerful, but it I don't think it would break the game. Like, mm -hmm. I don't think it would break the format. Mm -hmm. It would just make decks do something you don't really want to make them do. Right. So that's how I always felt about Jute. Yeah. So those are all our banned cards. Yeah. That's it. So a card that is not on here that everyone's talking about is Aether Vial. Yeah, Aether Vial's not on here. So, Legacy Murfolk, or I'm sorry, uh, Modern Murfolk? It's possible, but you don't have any of the counter spells. Like, you don't have Mental Misstep, Force of Wheeler Days. Mm -hmm. So, like, you're going to actually have to hold it, man. And sure, Crypto Command's really good, and so is Spell Pierce, but, like, I mean, there's one thing that, like, I really want to play Murfolk because of, and that's Punishing Fire, mm -hmm. Grove of the Bird Wells. That's still legal, and there's still going to be Aggro Creatures, and, I mean... You know, who knows, like, Ruben Zoo might be taking out the other Zoo. Everyone's talking about Zoo. I think Zoo's going to be one of the most popular decks right off the bat. Absolutely. And, you know, Ruben Zoo trumps regular Zoo already. Right. And uh, that's that's one combo that I think we'll see some play. Mm -hmm. At least maybe out of a control deck, just doing the Punish and Fire combo out of a control deck. Sure. So, like, Morpho just gets eaten up by that. Yeah, and I can definitely see, you know, Aether Valen in Wild McConnell. So, makes sense to me. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't think Aether Vial... The cards that are banned in the format, mm -hmm. I make Aether Vial not as powerful. Because, mm -hmm. like, Goblins, you don't have Ringleader or Matron. Right. So you can't really do, like, the shenanigans yeah. that you could with, with a Vial. I mean, you don't have most of the great Goblins, you know, like Power Driver and yeah. these guys, because they're all in Onslaught. So, mm -hmm. um, but there are there are a lot of decks here that we were sort of looking at, like Dragonstorm is still legal, Lotus Bloom is still legal. Yeah. And so is Ride of Flame, and so is Seeding Song, and all this stuff. And so, like... Hive Mind? You know, and Hive Mind is right there behind it going like, hey, I win yeah. games too, and, you know, just out of nowhere. So if we can get sort of a window into the Brad Nelson world, tell me yeah. what you can about sort of how your you and, and your sort of your testing team and your buddies yeah. sort of reacted to the modern format and, and the thoughts there. Um, well, we were very happy to be working with Conley Woods. <laughs> At least I was. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Open format, that, that's the guy you want to be working with you. Exactly. But uh, everyone was excited. Like, initial reactions, I think looking at one, two, and three drops, and then combo decks is where it's at. Like, I'm not really looking at Blood Bird Elf yet. I'm looking at what what the fast decks are, what what strain you can do on has fast, how fast you can combo. Sure. Because you, when you're looking for deck, I don't want to start with Jund. Right. You know, I, I want to open the format. I want to look at Elves. Sure, like, Glimpse is gone, but you can still do other things with it. I want to look at all the decks that were super powerful in the past, mm -hmm. and maybe even figure out new combos. With right. this many cards, there might be some new combo decks that like we might not even see yet. So, you know, I can imagine that you guys are gonna have a blast going like, oh my god, I just found XYZ yeah. in, in you know, this combo. And then three hours later, it's terrible. Exactly. And then you're already on something else. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a waste. Yeah. Minute, but what about this? Uh, so if, uh, to, to sort of finish up here, if there was some guy at home, he, he won a PTQ or, you know, Magic Online PTQ or something, and he doesn't have the, the resources, the testing time, the, you know, he, he can't go to a cabin and hang out with the best Magic sure. players on the planet for a week, what would you do in, in that scenario? Uh, I mean, if you want it on Moto, then I would probably borrow cards and test on Magic Online. Like, the format is legal on Magic Online, so if you have access to Magic Online, 
I would just play Magic Online. Like, I mean, I'll be doing that all next week. And and then once I get to the internet internetless cabin, I'll be testing with the team. <laughs> but uh, just because you don't have the people to work with, you can proxy up your own decks and take them to the card shop. You know someone's going to sling with you. Like so, it's going to happen. Yeah, you know? absolutely. And just find a good buddy and work on the format for a while. To I mean, start practicing like the decks that we know about. Like Zoo, Zoo, I bet is going to be one of like the go-to's mm -hmm. for the people that don't get to test a lot. Sure, because it's going to be good. Like, yeah. I mean, it's Wild in the Cattle into Pride Mage into Night of the Reliquary. Like, that's always been a really good start. Absolutely. Yeah. Great. All right, guys. So that was our sort of first initial take on modern. I do appreciate the one and only Brad Nelson joining me for two weeks in a row. <laughs> so, for Evan Irwin, Brad Nelson, this was the Magic Show. Tapping the cards, so you don't have to. like the fatties. Oh, you better do the magical happy clappy time thing. Together. <gasps> I really didn't steal the magic clappy thing. <laughs> okay. I wonder where it went though. But it. we had a magical clappy thing. I showed up. You showed up. We said did steal it. <laughs> you said you would steal it multiple <laughs> times, and now it's not here. I mean, I'm gonna have to go to bar. We can't. We don't steal things. We're too good natured. Right, right, right. You you borrow them for indefinite yeah. periods of time. Yeah. Okay, sweet. So without telling. Me. All right. <laughs> good to go. Roll right on the mix set. All right, right on set. All right.